What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and happy BlizzCon opening day. I will keep my eyes on the ceremonies and watch for any hilarity. We pretty much know everything that's going to be said, but I'm looking for the things that are unplanned as opposed to the things that are planned. In other news, Death Stranding's release embargo has been lifted, and the reviews are coming in. Now, I think Kojima might have some of the most ravenous fans on the planet, and he's earned that. As a video game developer that doesn't trash talk the gaming community, that does things for their fans, you've got to respect that. Even if every game the man makes isn't for you, clearly Death Stranding isn't for a few. Overall, the early reviews are exceedingly high, with top critics at 86%, while 83% of critics recommending it. But there's some interesting stink pieces out there from the likes of IGN and others. To level set here, we've got, we've got this covered, giving it a 5. EGM, 10. Push Square, 10. Tr gaming Trend, 100. Screen Rant, perfect. Digitally Downloaded, perfect. Glitched, perfect. Gaming Revolution, perfect. Trusted Reviews, perfect. I mean, IGN Italy, 9.7. Gaming Nexus, 9.5. Geek Culture. I mean, I don't know a lot of these <laughs> companies. Uh, GameSpot gave it a 9. Uh, the game isn't going to be for everyone because you knew going in that there was going to be some element of of the walking simulator. And in today's short attention span battle royale world, it's just going to annoy some people. In particular, it would appear that IGN did not like it, giving it a 6.8 on the scale. And it's going to show some also interesting reviews. I've got a few reviews that are even lower but here's the interesting thing. IGN Japan, 9.5 out of 10. IGN Italy, 9.6 out of 10. IGN Spain, 8.7 out of 10. IGN South Africa, 9 out of 10. IGN America, 6.8. And if you look at the comment section below this tweet, of course, this is a lot of bait. Uh, I think that... In a world where in a, in a world where everybody gives a game a nine or a ten, you're going to write something that's a six or a five to get some attention. Although, like Deadspin is learning, it's not going to be the type of attention that you like. You can see some people genuinely agreeing with the review, although that's curious since nobody's played the game. But you could see most people pretty much sticking it to IGN for what is pretty much a ticky-tack review. You guys are a joke. Your other branches game gave the game high praise. You guys also gave Metal Gear Solid 3, or was it 5, a perfect 10 when the game was more cutscene than gameplay. Absolute joke of a rating. Bros, I mean, there's just... It's a diverse game for what I'm hearing, so no wonder how we're giving a 6.8 because it wasn't your cup of tea. It's like giving The Witcher 3 a 6 because it wasn't my cup of tea. This is the interesting thing, is when you have people reviewing games who openly admit that it's just not for them, you end up with a biased review. Why not have somebody doing it who actually likes the game style, I can add something of value. It's been a long time, by the way, since I told people exclusively games.com. It's funded by all of you. It's been around for almost a year now. The site is full of breaking news every single day, opinion pieces, and a forum I'd love you to come join, exclusivelygames.com slash forum. There's an awesome community there. If you're a forum person, definitely check it out. There's also an exclusively games discord where you can join and hang out as well. Definitely be a part of the exclusive games family. After all, you paid for it. Now, as we can see, I'll leave a link in the description. Overall, many reviews are strong, but then you also have sites like player two 
giving the review, giving the game an exceedingly low score and having all sorts of weird ticky tack reasoning. Now, again, opinions are like, well, they're like buttholes. This particular op opinion gave Death Stranding a D. Many expect things of Hideo Kojima, but take but it takes a degree of self-confidence to deliver something else instead. He left Konami because he wasn't allowed to take the time and spend money on some of the game he wanted, so it's depressing to see Death Stranding make so many mistakes that appear on some level to be dictated by what other people expect. Goes on. There's a game here, one without chores, a walking simulator and a tech demo for what Kojima Productions is capable of doing to the Decima engine. Because they've crafted a world unparalleled in its beauty, one with proper cinematic soundtrack to match and the aspirations of cinephile auteur, auteur creator, devoid of conspicuous progression systems, half-baked moving, moving mechanics, and pun-riddled storytelling. It's a six-hour-long game where you carry a baby in a jar from one side of America to the other. There's no resource farming or meaningless structure building. Time is not a factor, and neither are enemies. So vehicles and weapons don't exist. As you travel, you'll learn more about BB, about Mads Mikkelsen's character and his relationship with the empty world. The storytelling surrounding it, which features Mads at every turn, is basically the only portion of the game I enjoyed, except for a single line. A truly onerous, onerous person, which makes me physically cringe just thinking of it. Mads' storyline is the best in the game. Hmm. A D. How about Power Up saying, We've established that it looks and sounds great and performs perfectly, but what do you do? The game looks great, sounds great, and performs perfectly. Let's talk about why it sucks. Very little worth mentioning. Part walking simulator, part open world exploration, part third person shooter, Death Stranding is the most boring, mind-numbingly torturous game I've ever played. Not to mention that its narrative is a jumbled mess of pseudoscientific spirituality that folds in on itself so many times as to be unintelligible. As Sam Porter, I, want, I don't want to give away any spoilers. I don't want to give away any spoilers. Conversations between characters are barely more than long-winded explanations of the game and the world which renders the dialogue simply atrocious. When I said the actors do the best with the material, I meant it. The performance is great. The game is not. The crux of Death Stranding, much better off, avoided or ignored. Every time I thought I started to enjoy myself, it would do some new terrible thing to make me stop enjoying myself. There's a moment that you see you literally wait as a timer counts down three real-time minutes. For what purpose? I have no idea, but like everything else in Death Stranding, it made me roll my eyes with boredom. Death Stranding is clearly a labor of love for Kojima and his team, but I hate it. Games don't need to be fun, exciting, happy, or cool, but they should at least be entertaining. It's not entertaining. As of such, it fails as a video game. It fails as a narrative. It fails overall. Wow. The most painfully boring gaming experience of my life. Zero out of ten. Leaving it with a 3 out of 10 final score. It's, you know, it's not everybody is going to like everything, but it is pretty interesting to me that almost everybody at least respects this game. How about Survivor? Which, by the way, just to level set here, gave Mass Effect Andromeda a 9.5 out of 10 superb rating. Mass Effect Andromeda. Okay? Here's what they had to say. I can't stress how boring the core gameplay loop of Death Stranding is, nor how often you'll be falling over going through its motions. If you're not falling, you'll be mashing L2 and R2 buttons in order to regain balance or steady yourself after tripping on an ankle-high obstacle. Sam's got a scanner that will evaluate the lay of the land around you. Green means he might not trip for a minute, while yellow and red means you're going to give him problems. 
Hardly anything is green. Hilariously enough, the 45 or 50 hours of utterly terrible controls, you'll get to enjoy movement without these hindrances because the game's credits. During the game's credits, sorry. Here, Sam is legitimately fun to control, bounding up legends, ledges, and jumping around like a normal human being. I was going to include, I don't want to uh, spoil anything, but they give it a 3.5 out of 10. The problem with Death Stranding is that Hideo Kojima has been become wholly self-indulgent, making something I'm sure he considers a masterpiece. Death Stranding is anything but. Again, they gave Mass Effect Andromeda a 9.5. With its head so far its own butt, it's almost funny. It has four title cards in total popping up as you play. You will roll two complete sets of credits before you finish. It goes on and on and on, thinking falsely that you're enthralled with what's occurring. If this is a type of project that Kojima insists to make, I suggest he move from games to TV shows or feature films. Being weird for the sake of weirdness isn't enough. While Kojima hopes to hit the same level of work as David Lynch or Sam Lake, he falls very short. Even if Death Stranding's narrative was good, and it's not, a game needs to have actual gameplay. What you'll find within is abysmal, frustrating, tedious, and beyond repair. It's to be avoided at all costs. Interesting. These read a lot like those cool K-E-W-L kids in high school that were like, Oh, this is things popular. Yeah, it sucks. I hated it. Apollo 13 was stupid. You know, like that kind of that kind of that kind of that kind of person. And it they grow boring really quick. It's clear that Kojima it's Kojima who's really taken the piss. But Death Stranding is a bit like a frosted piece of glass. No matter how you polish it might be, it's still pretty dull. You really need to work incredibly hard to enjoy any of it because much of Death Stranding feels like a convoluted and requires far more effort than it has any right to. Take the fast travel system, for example, Verdict. Certain landmark games in recent years, like The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, and Red Dead Redemption 2, have managed to successfully tread the line between the rigidity of realism and the exhilaration of pure escapism. But, like its stumbling protagonist, Death Stranding just can't consistently get the balance right despite processing equally lofty ambitions and countless inventive ideas. There's a fascinating fleshed out world of supernatural science fiction to enjoy across a sprawling and spectacular map. So it's a real shame that it's all been saddled on gameplay backbone that struggles to adequately support its weight. Over the course of the journey, it's fitting that Kojima Productions latest is so preoccupied with social media praise because in some ways, I did, quote, like Death Stranding. I just didn't ever love it. Coming from a social media obsessed former Deadspin writer, I believe, the author of this article. I get it. I get that it's cool to hate on stuff that's really popular. But it's clear that while the game itself may not be for everyone, a score of three or even a score of six seems unrealistically bad. It seems like a lie. It seems like somebody was told to write a bad review to get this video. The problem is these too cool for school kids might get a few clicks. They might get a little shine in this video, but it's not the kind of attention that's gonna get people coming back to their website. It's not the type of attention that's going to get people respecting them. And at the end of the day, the game looks like it's going to be pretty good with most people rating it at least a high 7 to 8. IGN being the cool kid with their 6.8 out of 10. Now look, maybe you don't like it. Maybe. There's no such thing as a perfect game. Not everybody loves everything. But it's pretty curious that a website like IGN, which must be on the take, <laughs> to, to give the game a thinly veiled reasoning for giving it such a poor score i guess you stood out congratulations hope you enjoyed this video we'll talk to you again real soon